My name is Mark Montminy. I'm a professor at the Salk Institute, and I'm in the Department of Peptide Biology. Up to 10% of people in the United States, adults, have type 2 diabetes. That's roughly 30 million individuals. And probably the biggest risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes, or adult onset diabetes, is uh, obesity. Nearly 60% of people in the United States are overweight. Uh, not all people who are obese develop type 2 diabetes, though, and so it would be very useful to know which genes uh, predispose you to, to going on to, to be becoming diabetic because then you could go to your doctor's office and he could tell you uh, whether you're in that group that is likely to progress. The big problem uh, with genes that cause diabetes is that at one time we think that they had uh, some advantage, that they provided some advantage to uh, people. Uh, particularly that we're talking years and years ago when uh, uh, humans uh, survived as hunter-gatherers and there were periods of famine when um, you know, those that were able to survive and by burning less fuel uh, had a, an advantage over people that burnt uh, the food more uh, rapidly. When we have a, a big meal or a series of big meals, our body actually has uh, remarkably ac uh, able to maintain normal body weight. And that's because of a hormone called leptin, which is made by the fat cells in our adipose, right around the waist. And uh, it travels in the bloodstream uh, to the brain, where it controls a part of the brain called the hypothalamus. This control causes us to stop eating so much, and at the same time it increases the fuel burning, it increases the ability of the uh, body to burn more fat. And so you stay lean. Well, that works well on a short-term basis, but when you're chronically eating too much, the leptin stops working so well, and eventually you become resistant to it. It's like becoming deaf to, this, to a signal. Our particular lab has been interested in uh, a group of genetic switches. Uh, the one that we're talking about today is called CRTC3, and this genetic switch is actually turned on uh, in response to certain uh, catecholamine signals. So let me just back up here. When leptin goes to the brain, it causes uh, the body to burn more fuel by turning on catecholamine signaling. And so by doing that, it also switches on this genetic switch, CRTC3. And when it's done for a short period of time, everything works well. We lose weight, uh, we burn more fuel, and we stay lean. But with chronic heavy eating, uh, the CRTC3 switch actually feeds back and causes the cell to shut down its response to um, sympathetic or catecholamine signals. And so the result is that the fat cells no longer burn the fuel. And as a result, we gain weight. So what was so surprising about our study is that when we removed the uh, CRTC3 switch from mice through a genetic trick. Um, those mice stay lean. Each gene in the body uh, has two copies. If you remove both copies uh, from the mice, they are very lean. And if you remove only one of the two, uh, then those have intermediate weight gain compared to the, the ones that are what we call wild type. They have both copies present. Uh, so that suggests that the amount of this switch that's in the body has a very specific effect on how much uh, weight you can gain, even under these conditions where uh, you would gain a lot of weight. So we wondered whether there might be a human counterpart. Could the same switch in humans contribute to the risk of obesity? And so we uh, went to some collaborators at UCLA, Jerome Rotter and Mark Gudarzi. Uh, who study uh, diabetes and obesity genes in human populations. And what they found was that there was a specific mutation in the, the CRTC3 gene that actually increases its activity and is correlated with increased risk of obesity in Mexican-American individuals. Uh, it's known for uh, reasons for a number of reasons that Mexican-American populations have a higher risk of developing obesity and diabetes. And so uh, it was natural to see that uh, some of these genes might have 
uh, greater activity in that setting. What's surprising is that if you take the mutations uh, that increase CRTC3 activity, if they have two copies of those genes, they are more obese than individuals that have only one copy or no copy. And so just like what we saw in mice, there is this graded relationship between the amount of the CRTC3 switch and the chances of developing, of gaining weight and developing obesity. So the link between uh, CRTC3 and obesity suggests that it might be a useful therapeutic target for intervention in obesity and type 2 diabetes. Uh, and um, sort of supporting that, uh, CRTC3 switch is regulated by enzymes that are often very good targets for the development of these kinds of drugs. So there is hope, uh, at least uh, for that kind of uh, intervention in the future.